We want to graph the absolute value function y or g of x equals three times the absolute value of the quantity x plus two minus four. This equation is in standard form for an absolute value function which is y equals a times the absolute value of the quantity x minus h plus k. The values of a, h, and k will transform the graph of the basic absolute value function shown here in blue. Let's begin by identifying the values of a, h, and k. Notice a is equal to three, so because a is positive, the absolute value function will open up, and because it's positive three, the graph will be stretched vertically by a factor of three, which will make the graph narrower. To perform the vertical stretch, we multiply the y-coordinates of the basic absolute value function by three to determine the corresponding points after the vertical stretch by a factor of three. And now let's identify the value of h. Notice in standard form it must be x minus h inside the absolute value, and we have x plus two. We need to think of x plus two as x minus negative two, and therefore h is negative two. So when we have addition here, h is negative. When we have subtraction here, h is positive. Because h is negative two, the graph is shifted left, the absolute value of negative two units, or left two units. And then finally k, the constant on the end, is negative four. Because k is negative four, the graph is also shifted down, the absolute value of negative four units, or down four units. So to summarize, we know a equals three, which produces a vertical stretch by a factor of three, and the graph opens up. Because h is negative two, the graph is shifted left two units. And because k is equal to negative four, the graph is shifted down four units. And the vertex is always h comma k, which in this case is the negative two comma negative four. Let's verify these results using an animation before we graph this by hand. So here we have the graph of the basic absolute value function. Let's change a to positive three, which will produce a vertical stretch by a factor of three and make the graph narrower, which we see here. Notice how the point one comma one on the basic absolute value function after the vertical stretch is the point one comma three because to find the new points after the vertical stretch, we multiply each y coordinate from the basic absolute value function by three. Notice the point two comma two on the basic absolute value function corresponds to the point two comma six, because two times three is six. And now let's change h to negative two, which will shift the graph left two units, and then k is negative four, which will shift the graph down four units. This red graph is the graph of the given absolute value function, which is a transformation of the basic absolute value function. So going back to our work, let's now graph this by hand. Let's first perform the vertical stretch by a factor of three. So using these three key points on the basic absolute value function, we will now multiply the y coordinates by three. Notice the vertex has the ordered pair zero comma zero. If we multiply zero by three, we still have zero. And therefore, after the vertical stretch by a factor of three, the vertex is still at the origin. If we multiply this y coordinate by three, we have one comma three. We multiply this y coordinate by three, we have negative one comma three. So one point after the vertical stretch is one comma three, another is negative one comma three. Notice by determining just these three key points, we can make a nice graph of the absolute value function after it's vertically stretched by a factor of three, which would look like this. Notice to the left of the vertex, the slope is negative three. To the right of the vertex, it's positive three. And now we'll take these three key points and shift them left two and down four to determine the final graph of the given absolute value function. And let's start with the vertex. We will shift the vertex left two and down four. This is the final vertex of the given absolute value function. And now let's shift this point left two and down four and the final point left two and down four. If we want to find some additional points, we know the slope on this half is positive three and the slope on this half is negative three. So from this point, we can go up three and write one to determine another point. 
And then from this point, because the slope on this half is negative three, instead of going down three and right one, we can go up three and back one to determine another point. So this is the graph of the given absolute value function. To avoid any confusion, let's go ahead and erase the green graph and only leave the final graph. We could also verify our work by completing a table of values or graphing the absolute value function using graphing software. If we were to use a table of values though, we would want to have the value of h in the middle of the table. Notice h is negative two and then select two x values less than negative two and two values greater than negative two. This would give us points to the left and right of the vertex. So we could use negative three, negative four, negative one, and zero. And we've already completed the table of values shown here and also graph the absolute value function using graphing software. So you may want to take the time to verify this table is correct and each ordered pair is a point on the final graph. I hope you found this helpful.